Hiya, in today's video we're going to have a look at the crucial topic of relevancy in essay composition. Now this is the most important thing for you to get right because it is the biggest determinant of the marks you will get for your efforts. An irrelevant essay, no matter how beautifully it's been composed, no matter how well it uses evidence, will never get a good mark, in fact it's probably going to fail, simply because it's not fit for purpose. Now at this point you might be thinking, well, do I really need to watch an entire video if the message is quite simply, I need to keep my essay responses relevant to the title I've been set, surely that's obvious. Well here's where you've got to be careful. As Arthur Conan Doyle once said, nothing is so deceptive as an obvious fact. The point is that most students who fail essays or get poor marks in essays do so because they haven't convincingly addressed the essay title they've been set. And it's very easy to do this inadvertently for a number of reasons. The first thing it can cause problems in keeping your responses to essays relevant to the title you've been set is something called the illusion of knowing. The illusion of knowing occurs when you make a premature judgment about the extent to which you understand something. So in the context of an essay title, it's very easy for you to look at an essay title quite superficially and think, yeah, I understand that. But the problem is, if you've had to look at that essay title superficially and you haven't deconstructed it, there's a very good chance that your perception of the extent to which you understand it is erroneous. And if that's the case, then you're already going to be off to a bad start when it comes to addressing that essay title correctly and comprehensively. Now the second thing that can cause problems when it comes to keeping your essay responses relevant is something called the availability bias. And the availability bias just means that we tend to favour and prefer information that's readily accessible to us. Now in the context of essay writing this could mean that you are going to gravitate towards sources that maybe you found particularly interesting, that resonated with you, or maybe the ones that you found particularly easy to take in. However, those sources may or may not be the best suited to addressing the specific essay title that you've been set. And of course, if you're ploughing on with those sources, irrespective of whether they are the best suited to address the essay title, just because they resonate with you or because they're the most easily accessible, again, you're off to a really bad start in keeping the contents of your essay relevant to the essay title. The third thing that can make it difficult for you to keep your essay responses relevant to the title that's been set is something called cognitive offloading. Now, cognitive offloading is just something that we do to try and reduce the burden on our cognitive systems. So for example, memory, attention and decision making. Now, in the context of essay writing, what's the first thing that people generally do when they set an essay title? That's right, unfortunately, the first thing they often do is hit Google. But the problem is, the results that Google generate are not necessarily the ones that are going to be most useful to you in addressing the essay title that you've been set. The purpose of this video is to ensure that you have a clear idea about what we mean by the term relevancy in the context of essay composition. I'll be sharing some hints and some tips with you that will help you avoid problems with relevancy in your own essays and ensure that your composition remains relevant through the entire writing process. So I'm going to switch to PowerPoint now so that I can show you some examples of text and give you some activities that will help you get your head around this vital concept of relevancy. One thing to bear in mind is that the examples that I'll be giving will be from the psychological literature, but you don't need to know anything about psychology or the topics in question to benefit from this video, because the purpose of putting the text on the screen is just to illustrate the important principles in keeping your essays relevant. So to help you understand the concept of relevancy and how it tends to manifest itself in responses to essay titles, let's have a look at a hypothetical essay title. With reference to the work of Milgram, 1963, and his contemporaries, why might people be predisposed to obey authority figures? Now again, if you're not studying psychology and you have no idea who Milgram was, what he did in 1963, or any work in knowledge of the study of obedience, don't worry, you don't need to know any of this stuff. What I'm going to ask you to do in the next slide is have a look at a piece of text and simply make a judgment as to whether that text is relevant to the essay title we've just outlined. So here's the text I'd like you to have a look at. Pause the video so you get a chance to read the text and think about whether it's relevant to the essay title we've just had a look at. 
and then play the video when you're ready to continue. So you may have looked at this text and thought, well, superficially at least, this looks like a relevant response to the essay title. But if you go back to that essay title and then you look at this text again, you might notice that although it seems superficially relevant in that they're clearly referring to the right study, Milgram 1963, what they're not doing is using that material to address the focus of the question, which was about the causes of obedience. Now, because they haven't done that, this text is almost entirely irrelevant. Yes, it's addressing the right topic, but it's not got the right focus because the essay title was asking what the results of Milgram 1963 can tell us about why people obey, i.e. the causes of obedience. And there's virtually nothing in this text extract that relates to the cause of obedience. It's referring to the ethics of the Milgram study. So the lesson here is that appearances can be quite deceptive and even material that addresses broadly the right topic can still be almost entirely irrelevant to the specific requirements of the essay title that's been set. So here's another extract of text that's responding to the same essay title. Have a look at this text and see if you think it's an improvement on the previous piece of text. And if you think it's an improvement, try and identify why it's an improvement. Pause the video and press play when you're ready to resume. So hopefully you'll agree having looked at this text, this is a big improvement on the previous passage of text because this is actually addressing the focus of the essay title. If you recall, the essay title was asking about the causes of obedience. And you can see right in the first sentence of this piece of exposition that the author is making it clear that's what they're addressing. So let's just read it out for a second. The extent to which a person feels responsibility for their actions has been cited as a causal factor in aberrant behaviour. So you can see here that this author hasn't given themselves the opportunity to go off on a tangent because they've signposted to the reader right from the outset that they're looking at a causal factor. Of course, it's one thing to be able to identify relevant and irrelevant content in someone else's work. But what you want to be able to do to improve your own essay writing is know what the tripping hazards are that can cause your work to go off track. So what we're going to do now is have a look at a couple of the main tripping hazards that are responsible for work becoming much less relevant than it should be to an essay title. And also consider what you can do to avoid falling foul of these tripping hazards. The first tripping hazard is a really simple one, but it's one that gives rise to a lot of the issues that we spoke of at the start of this video. Let's illustrate this with respect to another hypothetical essay title. Discuss how research on obedience might be used in the future. Outline some of the relevant ethical issues. Looking at this question, it would be very easy to zero in on the bit that mentions obedience and think, OK, well, I understand what this question is asking for. I'll just get on with the process of essay writing now. And that's the illusion of knowing in action for you, because you've prematurely assumed that you understand something, but you haven't really taken in what specifically this question is asking you to do with the literature on obedience. Equally, you could look at this title and again, immediately zero in on the obedience aspect and start thinking about the particular research or the particular issues that come to mind when you hear that term. But the problem there is what you've got operating is the availability bias, i.e. the things that occur to you most readily associated with the term obedience might not be the best things to help you answer the particular essay title you've been set. Finally, you might be inclined to look at this essay title and think, OK, well, I'm going to hit Google and find out what it's got to say about this topic. And again, that will be the process of cognitive offloading. But it would present the same kind of issues as the availability bias, because when you put something into an Internet search engine, some results are going to be more popular than others. So it might prioritize certain sites above other sites. And the problem there is that the sites that your search engine prioritizes might not contain the most suitable material for you to answer the essay title that's been set. So the way you can avoid falling foul of this trap is really simple. 
and it just involves spending a couple of minutes deconstructing any essay title that you receive right from the outset. So to help you do this, I've included a table below. Now you can see on the left hand side of the table, I've broken this essay title down into its component parts. And pretty much any essay title you get can be broken down in this fashion. There'll be a topic, an instruction for that topic, and there may also be a subtopic and an instruction for that subtopic. So what I want you to do is have another look at the hypothetical question or essay title on this slide. And I want you to break that essay title down into the component parts as identified on this table. It should only take you a couple of minutes, so pause the video and press play when you're ready to resume. So hopefully the responses you've generated for this activity look a lot like the ones that I've put in the response column in the table below. There are two things I'd like you to take away from this activity. The first is just how easy it can be to quickly look at an essay title and arrive at the wrong idea about the demands it's making of you as an author. If you do this, you're massively increasing the odds that you will produce an irrelevant and or incomplete response to that essay title. The second thing I'd like you to take away from this activity is just how quick and easy it is to break down an essay title into its component parts. And in doing this, you are massively reducing the likelihood that you will produce either an irrelevant and or incomplete response to the essay title you've been set.